Sarah, it's Isabella. I'm outside our bakery waiting for you. Perhaps we could meet up and discuss your brilliant bakery. It's time we spoke again. All my love, Mum. Mimi Karachi? Yes? You know this girl? She's my best friend's daughter. And where's your friend? What the hell are you going to do? There is somebody I could still try. I didn't expect you to have quite so much. Please just tell me where we're going. Isabella. Mum would have wanted us to open this bakery, so that is what we're going to do. You can definitely see its potential. What? It's a crack den. What's that smell? Cat's piss. Croissants, fresh from the oven. There are four other bakers. What makes you so special? Why don't you try one? Tell me. Good luck. Here we go. Wow, crowds. This is Kira Lynn with Hollywood First Look Features, and today I am not only hungry, but very excited to speak with Eliza Schroeder, who is the director of the film Love, Sarah. I know that you came up for the with the inspiration, and you must either be a baker or someone who loves baked goods or both. Based off the loving way your film brings people together to eat. Talk to me a little bit about that inspiration. The inspiration really came, I wanted to, originally I wanted to make a film about um, three very strong, different women. Um, and uh, baking has always been at the core of my heart and of my family's heart. It's always been a connecting point for all of us. So I wanted to definitely bring that into the mix because I just love baking. I love anything that's sweet, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, so yeah, combining these two and um, making a film about three different strong women and my love for baking. That's how it all started. Talk to me about what it was like trying to cast these three roles. Well, it was really um, uh, interesting because um, obviously when we when we had the confirmation that Celia would uh, play the part and everything else pretty much fell into place. Um, and these three ladies are all represented by the same agency and agent. So that also gave him a certain unity um, that was really great. And I remember when I was meeting um, Shannon for the first time, you know, we needed we needed an actress who could also dance. So that was, of course, difficult um, to find someone. And she, my God, I mean, she really just uh, did so well. It's only in the last few decades that openly speaking about one's grief and how one deals with it has become really acceptable and how one may deal with a person's legacy. Talk to me about that process for you. So I, so I wanted to tell a story uh, about losing a dear one because I've lost my own mother a couple of years ago. So suddenly the, the whole um, topic of loss became super important to me and I wanted to do it in a very um, sort of you know, touching and, and deep way. But at the same time, I also really wanted to give my audience the chance to recover from that and, and sort of see that there's light at the end of the tunnel when you have lost a dear one. And definitely want to show, I think, what it means if you suddenly join forces with people you might have gotten out of, out of touch with. Um, and what happens if you reach out your hands again? And what happens if you actually, you know, um, forget about your 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 headstrong attitude for a moment and just um, just try to reconnect? And I guess that's what I was trying to do to to show that if you then reconnect with people who who are dear to you, you can jointly get over the pain of losing someone. You know? I can only imagine what this journey has been like for you, and then having your film open in the midst of a global pandemic. Talk to me about what <laughs> what those expectations were, knowing that, you know, you may or may not have gotten a theatrical re release, but I know that you did. And then just that sort of journey for you. So I think, of course, you know, under normal circumstances, the film would, really, would have been longer in cinemas. It has been um, in cinemas in Australia and New Zealand and, and quite successfully. So, you know, it was sort of box office it. And, and, so that was a great little success for us. And then it came to the UK over the summer. And then of course, you know, the pandemic was in full swing. So um, I guess we've always been quite realistic about our expectations and to not be too disappointed. And I have to say that I'm actually really quite um, excited about the fact that, the, that so many people have watched it at home and with, you know, with their families. And so we've had an amazing response in Europe and, and here in the UK. Uh, from, like people emailing me, getting in touch with us, saying how much they loved watching it, they've watched it again with their family, and you know, what a treat during lockdown. And 
So I, in a way, it might be a blessing in disguise. Of course, I've shot it for the big screen. You know, I'm a director and, you know, I'm a visual person. So of course, you, you know, you shoot it for the big screen. But, um, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm pleased because it reaches people. So that's what I want to do. Oh, and it, it reached me and touched me in so many different ways. Congratulations. Thank you. Love, Sarah is available with on video on demand. I'm Carolyn, and you're watching Hollywood First Look Features. This city is home to people from all over the place. We make our bakery something to remind them of home. You were her best friend. If anyone can put her spirit into this, it's you. So you're going to join me or what? Love, Sarah. Would you like to come in for a coffee? I might be up all night. Lucky me.